So let me show you. <clears throat> if you haven't seen the tutorial sheet, uh, let me show you where it is. All right. So if you go to share screen, um, the tutorial sheet for for today is. If you go to the course website and um, and look at under week seven. So this is week five, week seven, this is week seven, and click on the tutorial sheet, right, is this one. So this is the, the tutorial sheet for today, guys. It's not a long one, it's pretty short, only four pages long. So, so what I will do as usual is to go through, go through line by line and uh, do all the and also do the exercises at the at the very end, at the very end of the exercise, right? All right. So let's uh, before I begin, let me go back to the website and go to. There are four uh, in this uh, session. I will use four R functions, which are these ones, right? So let me copy them. And uh, also, let me copy them and paste them into the R session. So I need to open the R session, which is to open the R session. You go into the start menu and uh, go down the menu and click here, and then you choose the 64 version. And then I'm going to paste the functions that I just copied. All right, guys, so let's let's begin. I hope you guys have the you, you have the tutorial sheet in front of you, right? If you don't, please, uh, please let me I mean, you, you should go to the course website, you'll be able to see the tutorial sheet for week seven. All right, the first the first function I'm going to talk about is this one new newf.1, okay? Um, so in this function, in this function, um, I'm gonna, what this function does is the following. What it does is it computes uh, values of the following statistic. Um, let me explain what it does of the following statistic for um, for 500 samples of size n simulated from the standard normal distribution right so that's what it does where where s squared s squared denotes the sample variance Right and uh, sigma squared it denotes the sample sorry population variance all right and n uh, n denotes the sample size okay now I don't know whether you remember we talked about this we talked about this statistic earlier on in this course. I mean, in particular, if you look at the, the video on the chi-square distribution, which, which we did some time ago, um, in case you forgot, uh, if you look at the video on the chi-square distribution, this statistic must follow the chi-square distribution with n minus one degree of freedom. So, so just to refresh your memory, to refresh your memory, this statistic follows the chi squared distribution with n minus one degree of freedom, right? This is a result. This is a result I stated in in the video on on the on the video on chi squared. In case you forgot, please please try to remind yourself going back to the video, right? Now, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do in this tutorial is to, is to illustrate this theoretical, this is a theoretical result, all right? 
So I'm going to show you how to how to illustrate this result using simulation, right? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate from the function new f dot one uh, five um, five hundred values of this, right? Five hundred values of this with n equal to fifty. So when you enter this command, what it does is the following: it computes, it computes five hundred values of of n minus one s squared divided by sigma squared, right? And these values are computed by generating five hundred samples, each of size n. And in this case is 50 from standard normal distribution, right? So as you can see, if you look at the list of numbers, there are 500, there are 500 values of this statistic, right? Okay. And the 500 values are obtained by generating 500 samples, each of size N from standard normal, right? Now, according, according to the theoretical to the theory, According to the theory that this must follow the chi-squared uh, distribution with n minus one degree of freedom. So, in other words, the the, the numbers that we simulated must follow a chi-squared with fifty minus one, which is forty-nine degree of freedom. Now, let's check if that is the case. Actually, right? To do, to check that, the first thing you must do is to do a histogram of the simulated data. Right, so I'm gonna do a histogram with a frequency equal to force, and this is what you will get. So as you can see, this is the the histogram of the simulated data with uh, x ranging from 20 to 90. So let's take let's define x as a sequence of numbers from 20 to 90 in steps of say one. Now, according to the theory, according to the theory, the histogram must follow the density of a chi-square distribution, right? With a degree of freedom equal to 49. It's 49 because it's n minus one, where n is in this case is 50, right? So if you, if you plot the density of the chi-square on top of the histogram, it must be a good fit. And let's see if it is. It is, as you can see, the, the density of the chi-squared, which is the, the line that I have plotted, right? With 49 degree of freedom, degrees of freedom, is a good match to the, the simulated histogram. And that's what the theory says. The theory says, you should go back up again. The theory says that this, this statistic, right, which we, which we are simulating, must follow a chi-square distribution with an n minus one degree of freedom, right? Okay. You guys follow this or no? Okay, stop going. Uh, okay, thank you. If, you. if you're not following it, please, please let me know. I mean, I'm happy to repeat as many times as you, as you want. Uh, okay, okay. Now in this case, I took n to be fifty. Now let's see what happens if, say, n is some other number, right? So let's say, suppose, let's take n to be, um, say, twenty, right? Okay. So you repeat the same thing. Um, you do the hist command as before. And if you look at the plot, it looks something like this. So the x-axis ranges from say five to 45. So you define the x-axis to go from five to 45. And then you define the y to be the density of the chi squared. Now with the degree of freedom will be 19, right? Because n is 20, so 20 minus one is 19. Now, if you do the lines, you will see, you will see this plot. As you can see, one, one, one more time, the, the, the simulated histogram is, is fitted well by the density of the chi-squared with 19 degrees of freedom, 
right? And that's what that is. This is what you will expect according to the theory, right? Okay. Now let's repeat this with say n equal to hundred. All right. So I'm going to repeat the whole thing with n equal to hundred. Then you do a histogram like this, and the histogram looks like this. Uh, goes from 60 to say 150. So you define the x-axis to go from 60 to 150 in steps of one. And then you define the y to be the density of the chi squared. Now the degree of freedom will be 99 because n is 100, okay? And then you do the lines plot. And if you look at the graph, as you can see, one more time, that the density of the chi squared with 99 degree of degrees of freedom is a good fit to the simulated data, as you would expect. Okay. Is this clear to you guys or not? Any any questions on this? Hello, guys. Talk to me. Are you, are you all okay? Yeah, good. All right, let me go to the next section of the tutorial sheet. For the next section, I'm gonna use this function new newnewf.2. Now what this function does is the following. It, let me, let me explain. It computes, uh, values of sample mean, right, for, <coughs> Uh, 500 samples, each of size n simulated from the standard normal, right? And it also computes the the sample sample median for the same sample, and also it also computes the the sample. Variant. So, so it does three things, guys. Three things. So it it completes the sample mean, the sample median, and the sample variance, right? For five hundred samples, each of size n, simulated from the standard standard normal distribution, right? Um, so let me show you how to. Um, so to, to, to do this, to execute this function, you, I will write this rest two equals new f dot two with say, and let's take n to be say 30 for instance, okay? Sorry, 30, I mean 30. Now if you type rest two, you will get the, oh. Did I say rest two? All right, I, I, I think I was mistaken. All right, okay, okay. I, I, it, the, the, you should delete the, the third line here. Sorry, it only computes the sample mean and the sample median. It doesn't compute the sample variance. So I was, I was wrong when I said it also computes the sample variance. So it only computes the sample mean and the sample median for 500 samples of size M simulated from the standard normal. So that's why you have only two columns. The first column is X bar, which is the sample mean. The second column is MED, which is the sample median. And it does it for the 500 samples. So, so the first column, the first column gives the 500 values of the sample mean. And the second column gives you the 500 values of the sample median, right? Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, now if you, if you do a box plot, you should do a box plot of rest two. This is what you will see. You will see a picture like this, right? And as you can see, uh, the, the, there are two box plots. The first one is for the 500 values for the sample mean. And the second one is for the 500 values of the sample median. And they are both symmetric in the sense that the middle line is about halfway between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Um, the, the first box is, is a little bit narrower compared to the second box. 
So you can say that the variability is smaller, slightly smaller uh, for the sample mean, right? Compared to the sample median. Remember that the width of the box measures how variable the data are. So in this case, the first box is slightly smaller than the second box, which means that the variability of the sample mean values is slightly smaller compared to the sample median, all right? Now, that's for n equal to 30. Now, if you repeat the same thing, say, for n equal to, say, 100. So let me take n to be 100 and do the box plot, you will see you will see this. So once again, once again, you have two box, the, the, the first box plot is slightly smaller than the second box, right? Which means once again, that the variability of the sample mean values is smaller than the variability of the sample median values. All right, guys. Talking to each other, complaining about everyone else living in an echo chamber, and they're all saying the exact same words. All right. Okay, guys. Any? Are you okay so far? Any questions? All right. Please let me know what you do. All right. So now let's repeat this for n equal to say two hundred. So n equal. To, uh, so for n equal to two hundred, again the picture is very similar. Again, you have the the two boxes are symmetric in the sense that the middle line is halfway between the lower and upper quartiles. And again, the, the, the variability of the first box is slightly, well, is, is shorter compared to the second box, which means that the, the variability of the sample mean values is smaller than the variability of the sample median values, right? All right, so next thing I'm gonna talk about is there's a result I mentioned in the in the lectures, sorry, in the, I mean, in the videos. Uh, I don't know whether you remember. Suppose, um, suppose you have data x1 to xn from, right, all right. Now, the result that I mentioned in the, in the video is the following, that the sample mean x bar has also normally distributed with the parameters, the mean equal to mu and the variance equal to sigma squared by n. Do you, do you guys remember this result? This is a, a theoretical result that I, I mentioned in the, in the, if you don't remember, please look at the video on normal distribution, you will see this result. This is a result I, you don't need to know the proof, but you need to know, you need to know how to apply this. So this is a result that I stated in the video on normal, okay? Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna illustrate by simulation that this result is correct, right? So to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is to, okay, do the rest, simulate with n equal to 200, right? And then I'm gonna do a histogram of the, of the, the mean values, which is x bar with frequency equal to false, right? And this is what you see, right? So this is the, the histogram of the simulated values of the sample mean. All right, as you can see, the x-axis ranges from minus 0.3 to 0.2. So let's define the x, excuse me. Let's define the x-axis to go from say minus 0 0.3 to 0 0.3 in steps of 0.01, right? Now why, No, I don't know. I think I got a problem. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Okay. I think my internet is breaking down. Is it okay now? I think my internet is a problem sometimes. All right. Now define 
define y to be the density of the normal, right, at x with the mean equal to mu. Now we are taking mu to be zero and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So it's one divided by the square root of n. This n here, we are taking it to be 200, right? Okay. Can you hear me guys now? Or is it still frozen? Hello. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the, finally, you do the line plot with X and Y, okay? And you should go back to the plot. You should go back to the plot, sorry. It's kind of hidden beneath this, it's kind of hidden. All right, you can see, you can see this plot here, right? So what I have done here, guys, is to, is to plot on top of the histogram, the density of the normal with the mean equal to zero and the standard deviation is one divided by square root of n. n in this case is 200. So it's one divided by the square root of 200, okay? So as you can see from the graph, the density is a good match to the, the simulated histogram. And that's what you will expect because that's the, the theory. The theory says so, right? The theory says that the sample mean must follow the normal distribution with these parameters, right? Mu and sigma squared by n, okay? Now, let me repeat this with, with a different value for n. So let me repeat this, say, with n equal to 100, right? So I go back to go back to this, say with n is 100, and do the histogram one more time. And the histogram looks like this, right? And then you define the x values as this, and define the y values. Now you change your n to 100, not 200 anymore, okay? Okay, and then you do the lines plot, right? And this is what you will get, okay? As you can see, one more time, the density of the normal with zero mean and standard deviation one over square root of 100 is a good match to the simulated histogram. And that's what you, you will expect. You would you will ex expect that because of the theory. Uh, and finally, let me show you with n equal to 30. So let me repeat this. Let me repeat this with n is 30. Uh, do the histogram. The histogram looks like this, right? And define the x values and define the y values as, so I change n to 30 now. And finally do the lines plot. All right, now it, it looks kind of weird because I haven't defined the x values properly. Well, I may, I should do it more carefully change the x to say from minus 0 0.6 to plus 0 0.6 and then y and then do the lines. Now it looks better now, all right? Okay. So you should always, you should always look at the histogram and define the x values uh, to go from whatever the value, the lower limit to the upper limit, okay? All right. So this is the lower limit here is minus 0 0.6 to 0 0.6, okay? All right, guys, any questions on this? So this is the second exercise. Uh, before I go to the next one, do you have any questions? Hello, guys, talk to me, please. Are you okay, guys, so far? Any, do you have questions? Okay, thank you. All right, the next, the next uh, exercise is based on this function, new f dot three. Now what this function does is, is the following. It, it computes uh, values of sample, sample mean for 500 samples, each of size n simulated from a Poisson distribution uh, from a Poisson distribution with lambda equal to 10. And it also computes 
the values of the sample median and it also computes the values of the sample variance. All right, so it does three things. It, it does three things, guys. It computes the sample mean, the sample median, and the sample variance for 500 samples, each of size n simulated from a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda equal to 10. All right, so let me let me illustrate this. Now, if you say res three uh, with the function new f dot three, uh, with say n equal to let's take n to be let's take n to be say thirty, right? And then you should, you should type res three, you will get this data. As you can see, there are three columns. There are three columns of data. Right, the, the first column gives the, the 500 values of the sample mean. The second column gives the 500 values of the sample median. And the third column gives the 500 values of the sample variance, right? Okay, uh, now if you, uh, if you do a box plot, if you do a box plot of the of the data that we simulated, you will see you will see this. Um, there are three box plots. The first one is for the sample, the 500 values of the sample mean. The second one is for the 500 values of the sample median. And the third is for the 500 values of the sample variance. Now, from this picture, what you can see is that. The, the sample variance has the highest variability, right? And the sample mean and the sample median, there's not a lot, what? Well, there's not a lot to choose between the two, right? And the sample median kind of looks weird. Do, do you see why? Because if you go back to the data, let me show you the reason the, 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 the reason that the box plot, the box plot for the sample median looks kind of weird is because of the way it is. Remember, you should go back to week one, uh, week one of my lectures or week two of my lectures. You will see that the sample median is defined as the middle value of the data, right? Okay. So in other words, the sample median has to be equal to one of the data that you observe. Now here we are simulating from a Poisson, from a Poisson distribution. And the Poisson, as you know, the Poisson can only take integer values like mm -hmm. zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera, right? Because, because of the way it is defined. So that means that the sample meet the values of the sample median has to be equal to an integer or half an, half an integer. It's half an integer depending on how many data points you have? Like, if n is, if the number of, uh, if the number of data points is, is even, then you have a half integer. Right? If it is odd, then it's just the middle number. Right? So as you can see, the 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 values for the sample median are like 9.5, 10, 10, 9, 10, 8.5, 10, and so on. That's because of the way the sample median is defined. Right? The sample median has to be equal to has to be equal to one of the data points that you actually observe, which in this case is a integer integer value, right? Whereas the sample median, sorry, the sample mean or the sample variance can be any real number. It doesn't need to be an integer because the sample mean is basically defined as the average, which can be anything, right? And similarly for the sample variance. So that's why going back to the box plot, which is this one, uh, the the, sam the box plot for the sample uh, median kind of is kind of weird. You will see that in a minute. Now, if you, if I do this with say n equal to say hundred, right, and do the box plot one more time, again, as you can see, the box plot for the sample median is just one line, because because of the the way the sample median is defined. It can only take integer values. In this case, 
a, a whole bunch of them take the value 10. 10 is a, 10 uh, is an integer, of course. I mean, all right. Um, and, um, and now if you repeat this with say n equal to say 200, you get you get this again, right? Okay, so you have the, once again, the variability is the largest for sample variance, a second largest for sample mean and smallest for sample median right all right guys so this kind of completes um uh, well it's also asking you which of the estimators you would prefer to use and why in this case the, the estimator that you would prefer is 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 the sample median because uh, because that has the smallest smallest variability all right okay all right any questions on this uh, on this exercise, please let me know. Are you guys okay with this or no? All of you sure? Okay. All right. The the last exercise I'm gonna do is based on the function called new f dot four, which is this function here. Now what this function does is it computes uh, values of sample proportion for 500 samples simulated from from a binomial distribution with parameters n and p. Um, okay, I, I think I I talked about this. I don't know whether you remember, guys, that when in the video, on, I did a video on binomial distribution, right, some time ago. Uh, you might have forgotten, but in that video, uh, if, you, if, you, if you watch that video one more time, if you don't remember, I, sh I proved, actually, I, I, I showed you how to prove it, that the sample proportion is approximately, is approximately normal with parameters this okay do you, do you remember that i proved uh, i proved this result in the as part of the video on on the binomial distribution if you don't remember just please go back and look at the video one more time right this is this is a result i proved in that video right Okay, that the sample proportion is approximately normal with the mean equal to p and the variance equal to p1 minus p divided by n. Now, what I'm going to show you in this exercise is to is to illustrate this fact, is to illustrate the fact that the sample proportion follows this distribution, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is to simulate the data. So new f dot four with say let's take n to be say 100 and let's take p to be say 0 0.6 p has to be obviously it has to be a number between zero and one right so if you type this is the data that we just simulated right now i want to show you that the the, the distribution of this data can be approximated by a normal with these parameters so the first thing I need to do is to do the histogram of the data with frequency equal to F. So this is what you will see. So this is the, the, the histogram of the simulated data. It goes from 0 0.4 to 0 0.75. So you define the X values to go from 0 0.4 to 0 0.75 in steps of say 0 0.01. And you define the y values as the density of the normal at x with the mean equal to, now if you go back again, the mean must be p and the variance must be p times one minus p divided by n, all right? So let's go down, let's, let's go down further. So the mean must be p, our p is 0 0.6. 
and the standard deviation must be the square root of p times p times uh, one minus p divided by n. n n is hundred. Okay. All right, guys. So you see, I just used the the density of the normal with mean equal to p, and the standard deviation is the square root of square root of p times one minus p divided by n, right? Now, finally, you use the lines command with x comma y. And if you look at the plot, as you can see, as you can see the, the density of the normal, right, with parameters p and one minus p divided by n is a good fit to the simulated data. And that's what, that is, that is what you will you will expect because of the theory. All right. Now let let me repeat this with say n equal to two hundred. Right. So in this case n is hundred. So let me go back and choose n to be two hundred. Right. Then you do the histogram. This is the histogram. So let's look at it. So as you can see, it goes from point four five to point seven so let's define the x-axis to go from 0.45 to seven in steps of 0.01 and then you define the y uh, the mean is p again the the where the standard deviation so here n is 200 so change n to 200 and then you finally do the lines and as you can see as you can see one more time that the density of the normal is a good fit is a good fit to the simulated histogram all right okay guys and you can also do this with different values of p for example so if you want suppose suppose uh, suppose you change p to be say 0 0.1 all right uh, then you do the histogram and the histogram looks like this, right? So here the x-axis goes from say 0.01 to say 0.2. Uh, so you define the x-axis accordingly. So let's say 0 0.01 to 0 0.2. And then you define the y uh, to be the mean must be p, which is 0.1, and the standard deviation is the square root, the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. And finally, you do the lines, and this is this is what you see. So as you can see one more time, that the density of the normal is a good fit, is a good approximation for the data, uh, okay, simulated data. All right, guys, so this kind of completes, I mean, this today, the tutorial sheet is kind of short. Uh, so I kind of completed early. But do you have any questions on what I have done today? I mean, anything not clear, please let me know. Hello, guys. Hello, talk to me, guys. Are you okay with everything I've done today or no? Oh. If you have questions, please, please let me know. Please feel free to ask me. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So the thing is the next, what? Well, this is the last week before the Easter break, as you know. So there will be an Easter break until the middle of April. Uh, I just like to tell you that I will be in Manchester throughout the Easter break. And you can contact me 24 seven by email or Skype or Zoom or my home, my home phone number, which is 0161 I'm also happy to meet you in person uh, in Manchester. That is if, if, if you are going to be in Manchester, then I'll be happy to meet you anywhere in Manchester and go through some problems uh, with you. So. So please do feel free to contact me uh, during the Easter. Don't don't feel don't, please don't feel that you are 
bothering me okay uh, so yeah any problem any 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 problems that you have please please feel free all right and uh, one other thing is that um yeah about quiz number six if you if you haven't done it please uh, please complete quiz six before uh, 10 o'clock or 10 a.m on thursday this day after tomorrow right and um, i mean none of the quizzes are straightforward so i mean you really need i mean that's why i do so many examples as you know i do like 20 plus examples on everything so so it's to just to give you practice so uh so anyway try to try to complete if you need help with any of the quizzes you, you are feel free to con contact me 24 7 because some of the month really i mean you really need to work on it you know it's not something you do it in five minutes in a couple of minutes yeah so if you need help please feel free uh, to contact me all right all right so i will post the full solutions to to the tutorial today online tomorrow i mean with the typed solution and also the the video solution but i will post i will also post the solution the the, the 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 video of this session in the website uh, in, a, in about half an hour time all right as you know the website contains all the videos including the the videos for the review sessions and also the videos for all the tutorials that we have done so far right uh, okay guys so have a have a good afternoon and a good evening i will talk to you soon guys and have a happy easter break and don't don't please don't feel as as it please don't hesitate to contact me during the Easter break. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, guys, take care.